Hi, I'm Alex from Chemo Snacks and today I will be talking everything chemo nausea and eating for Cancer Pal. So why don't you come along and join me? Hi, I'm Alex Stewart and I'm the founder of Chemo Snacks. I'm really grateful to Joe and Cancer Pal for asking me to do this segment for the nausea focus. I feel really privileged to do it and I jumped at the chance when she asked me to do that. Now I'm just going to give you a little bit of background about myself so you know why I'm doing this segment. As I said, I'm the founder of Chemo Snacks and that comes about because of my own cancer. Quite a number of years ago I was diagnosed with breast cancer and the side effects from the treatment made it almost impossible to eat and take any food in. I was malnourished and I was skin and bone for a lot of the time. And the word malnourished isn't something we normally think of in um, quite developed countries. But since having the cancer and going doing more research into this subject, I find that um, a lot of studies have been done globally and they're saying that up to 80% of people going through cancer treatment will have some form of malnourishment along their way. And this can be due to the type of cancer it is itself, um, the head and neck cancers, a lot of the GI cancers, the, something that just goes with that but the vast majority of times it's due to the the treatment side effects and not being able to eat like normally I sort of kind of think this is quite unacceptable so I set out to do something about it and what we do at chemo snacks is really just listen to what your favorite foods are what your favorite meals are and recipes and we take those and we just show you how you can adapt and modify the ingredients or the consistency of the ingredients so the food themselves and the meals agree with your side effects so you can eat again like a normal person Now the added benefit of that is being able to maintain connection with family and friends through the sharing of meals and there's nothing quite like basking in the love of family and friends over, over a dinner, around a table, and just having fun conversation. And that's really important to maintain those connections when you're going through treatment. Now, other studies have also found that the really positive effects of maintaining your nutrition and your weight through your cancer treatment um, means that you might get better treatment outcomes and quality of life can be vastly improved as well. So that's why I do what I do. So let's get into this topic of nausea and more specifically, what can we do with our food and what should we be looking for so we can still eat even though we might feel nauseous. And nausea is one topic I can speak to from the heart. It was by far and away the biggest, lousiest side effect that I had going through my treatment. Couldn't even begin to describe what went on and if you're eating right now I'm really sorry but it was just horrendous. So this nausea, this topic, speak in my language. So let's get into this. I'm going to actually break it up into two parts. It's the type of foods that we can be looking for to try when we're nauseous and see if we can still eat those foods. And the other part is looking at just general some tips and hints that might help you be able to eat like, um, like you don't have nausea, which is really the aim of this. Well, the first one is really obvious and it's ginger because ginger is traditionally known as being a tummy settling food and good for settling nausea. Now I'm not going to reinvent the wheel here because I see Jo already has on the Cancer Pal blog a great information segment on ginger alone so definitely go in there and have a look at that. I'm not going to add to that anymore because it's great information that she has in there. The second one that I would point you towards is bland foods. And you know, it sounds like bleh, bland, but honestly, needs must. This isn't going to be a, um, a whole lifestyle eating program. It's going to be at the times when you need it. So go for bland food first. And, and by bland food, foods, I'm talking about crackers, dry toast, and pretzels. They're really the three go-tos when you're feeling um, nauseous. and nothing on them so you're not going to put butter on your toast you're having it completely plain and nobody really knows why these work either there's been no scientific research into it no can nobody can find out why it works it just does go with it now it's often also best to have these things first thing in the morning because we're waking up in the morning we have an empty tummy and often an empty tummy can worsen or heighten the feeling of nausea so have these when you first wake up i used to keep little um especially when i was in hospital little plastic wrapped um crackers beside the bed and i'd be 
I'm sucking on those the minute that I woke up because the empty tummy was going and it's like counterintuitive because you know you feel sick but you have to eat something so crackers were my go-to anyway. The, the other thing about the bland foods too is they don't have strong odours and smell and odours of food is something that can bring on waves of nausea. Whoops, there goes my nannies, bring on waves of nausea. So that's a bonus with those ones. Okay, now I'm just, I am checking my notes here. I don't have a very good brain and memory retention, so I make no bones about it, but chemo brain has never really left me. I do refer to notes. <laughs> The next one is clear beverages and the clear beverages are great for staying hydrated especially if you've been vomiting. They also provide you with some electrolytes. Now clear be beverages, the consensus is to go for not only the clear but cold as well. So we're talking about water, uh, juices, coconut water and if a specialist has um, guided you in this direction, sports drinks and oral rehydration fluids as well. But you do that in consultation with your specialist or with your dietitian. The trick with fluids is to take small sips and drink them over a long period of time. You don't want to be trying to down that bottle of drink all in one go. Probably won't have a great outcome. Just ha relax, sip away, sip throughout the day, make sure you've got something there all the time. Funny thing is about clear fluids is jelly actually falls into this category of clear fluid. Um, nobody could really work out what to feed me when I was going through my treatment and as I said very little agreed with me and so I was basically drowning in jelly and jelly like has zero nutritional content in it um, apart from the hydration that it offers you and it's a big joke because I wrote a cookbook and obviously can't stand jelly, particularly orange jelly now. And I named my cookbook, Jelly Is Not Food, simply because there's better ways of getting nutrition in. So it's a bit of a running joke. Now clear fluids mean clear fluids. So you're not gonna go for your caffeinated fluids, not gonna go for your coffee and your tea, dairy-based fluids, nothing like that. Overly sweet things as well, probably won't do yourself any favors having those. Um, best to stick to those, those pretty much the water-based drinks and just have those for a little while until you're up to having something else. The next one is broths and soups. Now honestly, a good broth can save the day when you're feeling nauseous. Um, you might want to have it cooled down just so it doesn't have that odour and that smell coming off it as well. But when I'm talking broths, I mean a clear broth. So we're back to that clear fluid again. So you don't want your chicken soup with your noodles in it. Leave that out, even strain it out if you have to, and just have the clear broth with the flavour. Great for providing some nutrition and also some electrolytes and hydration. The next one is bananas. Now, is there nothing that the humble old nani can't do? I say no, love them. Don't eat as many of them as I used to, don't know why, they're great. These are energy dense, soft nutrition bombs in peel. You might have remembered very early on at the start, I was talking about not being able to eat very much and you're looking for quality over quantity. That's where the banana comes into it. Great quality in this food, great nutrition, absolutely energy dense. So always go for a banana, mash it up. Also soft in the mouth. Um, I've got this theory that if I'm feeling, because I still get waves of nausea as well, as do general population, um, that if something's easy to chew, my brain isn't concentrating on you know, like chewing, chewing away in my mouth and signaling to my tummy that you know there's something going on there, it's gonna be heading your way soon. If it's easy to chew, you can just do it without the brain sort of going, oh, it's coming your way. It might go down easy, I don't know, it's just my theory. <laughs> now, other foods that fall into this energy dense and soft category are avocados, um, peanut butter, apple sauce, mashed potatoes and Pretty sure there's one I've forgotten. Refer to notes. Porridge, one of my mum's favourites and one of my favourites too, love porridge. Again, all energy dense, soft, easy to chew and pretty bland on the tummy. Now I mentioned apple sauce before and they're much like bananas. High in carbs, so great for energy. Also good for a bit of hydration in there as well. 
Now, back in years gone by, they used to refer to something called the BRAT diet, and then we're not talking about ratty children, but it actually stands for bananas, rice, apple sauce, and toast. And these are like the bland components that we're always talking about when we're talking about nausea and what can be, what can be eaten. Um, and again, a lot of people thought that was just too restrictive and it went out of fashion, I think, for a long time. However, as I said before, this isn't a lifestyle eating plan. This is something that just is a needs must. So the brat diet actually works really well. Now, talking about the rice though, it's just bog standard plain white rice. Not brown rice, not your really fibrous stuff, but your general long grain white rice. Don't get it mixed up. <laughs> Now that actually brings me on to rice, potato and noodles. Again, bland foods don't have a lot of cooking smells about them, if any, and really easy to prepare. So, I mean, you're either steaming or you're boiling. Not much involved in that at all. Now, another one that seems, again, counterintuitive is tart and sour foods. Um, be careful when you're looking at these because they can be too harsh on the tummy and if you have a sore mouth as well, I wouldn't be going near them. But tart and sour foods, I'd be looking for um, like jelly lollies or hard candies. Um, lemon flavoured, um, you can also have peppermint flavoured and the ginger flavoured. All might be a great alternative when you're not actually able to take in anything very much at all but need to settle the tummy. Now, I wasn't sure whether I was going to put in this next one, but I thought, what the hey? I'm just going off a research project that was done and they talked about high protein meals. There was a research done in 2008 by Max Levine and others and it was called uh, where are we? Protein and Ginger for the Treatment of Chemotherapy Induced Delayed Nausea. So that's the nausea that comes after you've had your chemotherapy, say about 24 hours later, that sort of induced delay, um, that sort of delay I'm talking about muddling words again. Um, and they found that the patients in their control group who had a high protein um, meal, uh, I think it was three meals during the day, and they were all paired with ginger in the meal as well. So no good if you don't like ginger, don't despair. This is just the results I'm giving you. They found that um, they coped better with their nausea. There was less nausea and less chemo-induced nausea and also the less need for anti-nausea medications. Now, I don't know the quantities of what they use and the specific foods they used. It's not my realm. I'd certainly be running this one by your dietitian. They're the people to go to to help you out with this one. Now, one that's really easy is simply eating foods that appeal to you. If it appeals to you and you feel like you've got a bit of an appetite for it, chances are it's going to have better luck with staying in there. Moving on to eating related tips. So these are just general tips and guidelines that might help out. And the first one, sorry, I am looking at my nose. First one is um, avoid becoming hungry and eat small meals throughout the day. We spoke about being hungry before. Um, triggering can trigger nausea. So try and eat perhaps every one to two hours, something small. Again, with, um, with drinks, just sip slowly throughout the day. So you may have discussed this next one before, is eating dry bland foods in the morning. Again, getting up with an empty tummy, tummy can trigger nausea. So you wanna just quell that from the start and start off in the morning, a bit of cracker by the side of the bed, pop that in your mouth, you're good to go. The other one is to eat slowly and to drink slowly. So we're not looking at, you know, guzzling down a whole glass of water. We're looking at small sips and the same with food. So just relax when you eat, when you drink. Some people have found that they have actually better success when they don't mix their eating and their drinking. So when you're having a meal, if the nausea is a real problem, perhaps try not having that sip of water, wait until after you finish the meal. Um, a, a bit of research has been done on that. The next one is to avoid strong odours, eating cooler or cold food, and perhaps having somebody else prepare your meals for you. Now, the cooking smells can trigger nausea, as can the smells coming off hot food when the steam comes off it and you get that up your nose, you think, oh, well, that's not quite what I thought that might be. Um, having colder food just eliminates that steam coming off, eliminates the odours or lessens the odours and can lessen that trigger for feeling nauseous. Now this one probably goes without saying, but avoid greasy foods, highly spiced foods, 
hot foods, as in chilli hot foods, they're just too harsh for the tummy. Completely leave those for another time. You'll get back to them, just not when you have a wave of nausea. Second last one is to avoid lying flat after you've had, had a meal or had some food. It just puts too much pressure on the tummy, so stay upright for about 30 minutes, maybe go for a gentle walk. They've um, done a lot of studies with walking and exercise, and it's about taking the mind off what else is going on and reducing stress and anxiety. So perhaps a gentle walk outside might take your mind off the, the nausea, and my very last tip, which is probably my favourite tip, is don't eat your favourite food when you are feeling nauseous. Now, I made the mistake of doing this and I didn't realise what was going on. It was after my first chemo session. Now, we have something in Australia, they're called barbecue shapes and they're just like a little cracker um, flavoured biscuit thing. And we were like this, we were best buds for decades. And came home from, from chemo, chilling out on the couch, lying down, watching telly. And my husband, who was my fiance at the time, said, want your barbecue shapes? I said, yeah, I'd love those. I've had a hard day, let's have the barbecue shapes. Here I am, get about a quarter of a way through the packet. Long comes the, um, the chemo nausea. Well, that was the end of that. So again, sorry for eating. All I associate barbecue shapes with now is 11 hours of vomiting. Not great. Just save your favourite foods for another time, otherwise you would just never want to eat them again. So you might be advised to stop eating altogether if you're vomiting. After that, slowly go back into foods. After that, you're looking at your clear soups and your broths again, and following on from that, you're going for your bland foods, mild foods, your bananas, um, your dry toasts, jelly, sometimes jelly is food, of course the rice, the brat diet, and then going back into solid foods. Now, I have a recipe that's called chicken soup soup because it suits so many different side effects. And one thing I do with this recipe is I break it up, much like this um, nausea eating plan, is so it goes from a clear broth into something that's got a bit more solids in there, but it's pureed, and then going back into a solid, more solid soup. It's great for, as I say, for so many different side effects, but it's really the trick when, um, when you're feeling nauseous. Now, I think Joe may have put that on the Cancer Pal website by now. If not, it's on the, the Chemo Snacks web website. Go in there, grab a copy of the recipe. It's free to download. Okay, I think you've probably heard enough from me, me now, and I wish you all the best, and bye for now.